Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 24th of September. Success of humanity lies in collective strength, not in the battlefield, says PM Modi at UN. Actor Meryl Streep shows solidarity with Afghan women and girls at UN. And newly elected Lankan president says won't get sandwiched between India and China. And now for all the details. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the Summit of the Future at the United Nations on Monday, highlighting the importance of reforms in global institutions in order to achieve global peace and development. PM Modi in his speech said, success of humanity lies in our collective strength, not in the battlefield. He also spoke about India being a model for elevating communities out of poverty, claiming the country has elevated 250 million people out of poverty and shown that sustainable development can be successful. He said India is ready to share this experience of success with the global south. Excellencies, success of humanity lies in our collective strength, not in the battlefield. Our Vaishwik Shanti even Vikas ke liye global samsthao mein reforms awashak hai. Reform is the key to relevance. The Indian Prime Minister, before concluding his U.S. visit, also called on Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly sessions. Modi had visited Ukraine in August, where he urged Zelensky to sit down for talks with Russia to end the war and offer to help bring peace. Modi's Ukraine visit followed a visit he made to Russia in July. Bangladesh Foreign Ministry on Monday lodged a protest against India's Home Minister Amit Shah, calling his remarks over the influx of Bangladeshi nationals into India as highly deplorable. During a rally in pole-bound Jharkhand last week, Shah had expressed concern over the inter-community situation in Jharkhand and said that the state has been witnessing slogans demanding Hindus and tribals to leave Jharkhand. He said, Tell me, does this land belong to Adivasis or Rohingya and Bangladeshi infiltrators? Reacting to these remarks, Bangladesh Foreign Ministry in a strongly worded protest note handed to Deputy High Commissioner in Dhaka conveyed its serious reservation, deep sense of hurt and extreme displeasure. It added, such remarks coming from responsible position against the neighbouring country's national will undermine the spirit of mutual respect between the two countries. Meanwhile, on the sidelines of the UNGA summit in New York, Bangladesh Interim Foreign Minister Mohammad Tohid Hussain met his Indian counterpart S.J. Shankar on Monday. This was the first such meeting between the leaders of Bangladesh and India after former Premier Sheikh Hasina fled to India following a student uprising. Meanwhile, Bangladesh's army chief has vowed to back the country's interim government come what may to help it complete key reforms after the ouster of PM Sheikh Hasina so that elections could be held within the next 18 months. In a rare interview with Reuters, General Bakar Uzzaman, the Bangladesh Army Chief, said the interim administration led by Nobel laureate Muhammad Yunus had his full support and outlined a pathway to rid the military of political influence. Born out of erstwhile East Pakistan in 1971 after a bloody independence war, Bangladesh came under military rule in 1975, following the assassination of its first Prime Minister, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, Hasina's father. The country was ruled by a military ruler till 1990 and again a military coup was staged in 2007, which backed a caretaker government that ruled until Hasina took power two years later. However, Zaman, 
who took over as the army chief only weeks before Hasina's ouster, said that the Bangladesh army that he leads would not intervene politically. He, however, added that in the long term, he wants to distance the political establishment from the army, placing directly under the president. The military as a whole must not be used for political purpose ever. He said, adding that a constitutional reform process under the UNIS-led interim government could potentially amend the current arrangement where army reports to the prime minister. Pakistan has picked Lieutenant General Mohammad Asim Malik as the new Director General of Spy Agency ISI, the Inter-Services Intelligence, the first change in the key post since 2021. The reported move come as the political role of the agency faces intense scrutiny. One former ISI chief has been arrested for supporting the political cause of jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan, who in turn alleges that the agency under current chief Naveed Anjum is being used against him. Several senior judges have also alleged in a letter to the Chief Justice that ISI agents were applying pressure on them to decide cases against Imran Khan. The post of ISI Director General, usually a serving military officer, is one of the most powerful positions in Pakistan at the intersection of domestic politics, the military and foreign relations. While the ISI chief technically reports to the Prime Minister, he is controlled by Pakistan's army chief. Moving on, members of the Pashtun Tahafuz movement held a massive protest and international conference in Geneva on Monday on the sidelines of the UNHRC session to raise Pakistani atrocities against ethnic minorities. A report. The Pashtun Tahafuz movement Europe on Monday held a massive protest outside the UN office in Geneva to raise the ongoing human rights abuses in Pakistan, focusing on enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings, arbitrary detentions and torture of Pashtuns. The activists particularly highlighted the crackdown on PTM, a socio-political organization and on prominent Pashtun leaders, including Manzoor Pashtin and Ali Wazir. Members of Pashtun, Baloch and Sindhi communities have long blamed that they have been targets of military operations and ethnic stereotyping in Pakistan. The situation is not highlighted by the local media forcing them to seek intervention through global platforms. The PTM also organized an international conference to put a spotlight on Pakistani atrocities. The discussions explored strategies to confront these challenges and secure a better future for the Pashtun ethnic minority, including the possibility of exercising their right to self-determination. The PTM also informed the international community about the upcoming Pashtun National Court or Jirga to be held on October 11 for Pashtun rights and justice. And a female cat has more freedom in Afghanistan than a woman does. Hollywood actor Meryl Streep said at the United Nations on Monday in a bid to get world leaders to focus on the plight of Afghan women and girls. The way that this society has been upended in a cautionary tale for the rest of the world, Streep said to encourage the inclusion of women in the future of Afghanistan. The UN has sought a unified global approach to dealing with the Taliban who have cracked down on women's rights since seizing power in 2021. Most girls have been barred from high school and women from universities by the Taliban. The group has closed beauty salons and curtailed travel for women without a male guardian. And today in Kabul, a female cat has more freedoms than a woman. A cat may go sit on her front stoop and feel the sun on her face. She may chase a squirrel into the park a squirrel has more rights than a girl in Afghanistan today because the public parks have been closed to women and girls by the Taliban. A bird may sing 
in Kabul. But a girl may not, and a woman may not in public. This is extraordinary. This is a suppression of the natural law. I feel that the international community as a whole, if they came together, could affect change in Afghanistan and stop the slow suffocation of an entire half the population who are incarcerated. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres told the event without recognizing the rights and freedoms of one half of its population, Afghanistan will never take its rightful place on the global stage. Sri Lanka will not be sandwiched between India and China, the island nation's newly elected president, Anura Kumara Disanayake said, highlighting his foreign policy for the first time. In an interview with Monocle magazine, Disanayake said the island nation will avoid being drawn into geopolitical rivalries and added that instead of aligning with anyone, his government will intend to foster balanced relationship between both New Delhi and Beijing. The JVP leader, whose party was traditionally considered pro-China, further said a neutral foreign policy approach is critical for Sri Lanka in order to safeguard its sovereignty amid the regional tussle of power. The island nation's critical position in the Indian Ocean region has made Sri Lanka a centre of geopolitical importance between New Delhi and Beijing. While India has historical ties with Colombo and engaged in various development projects, China's investment strategy has focused on large-scale infrastructure projects that gives it long-term economic leverage and potentially military use of critical assets. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.